Nearly everybody made a decision about the Brexit. Uh, sorry, everybody mainstream said it's the worst thing that could ever happen. CBI, the Confederation of, of, of um, uh, what's CBI? Confederation of, of, of business, um, business industry, isn't it? It's basically the club of big business. CBI represents the biggest businesses in, in, in Britain, the directors, the major business holdings in Britain, the CBI represents. The CBI was totally opposed to Brexit. Why would they totally oppose the Brexit? Because big business likes European integration because it gives the free movement of capital, the free movement of goods and, and a tariff-free zone. So they think it's a great idea. And on the back of it, they can also get the cheap labour that was coming from the former European, uh, Eastern European countries. So today, the British economy is not industrial-based, it's service-based. So if you run a hotel or building construction and... Um, and the hospitality is one of the biggest sectors in Britain. So if you're in hospitality or in construction, low, low labour is fantastic, cheap labour is fantastic. So on one hand, you go to the government and say, look, we want to be in the European Union. But on the other hand, they say, mm, we don't want too heavy uh, immigration policies because those Eastern Europeans, very good at construction, very well trained in the former Soviet Union, the former socialist countries were very well trained and educated. So their standard of, ed of construction is very high. So they want them to come over here because they can give them, they can give, get cheap labor basically. And if you look at all over the hospitality sector, which is hotels, um, bars, clubs, and all those industry, all the service industry and shops, it's hard to find somebody who's English born, English speaking. Uh, they might be English speaking, but the English is not their mother tongue. And why is that? Because again, it undermines the economy because they can get them in or try to get them in on cheaper labour. Because we all know if you're an immigrant, you're willing to do anything for your family. So you'll take whatever jobs go in. But if you're born in this country, you're not so keen to work at McDonald's. You don't want a job. You don't think, well, I'm, I live in England, I'm going to work at McDonald's. You think McDonald's is just something you do when you're at university or I'm at college. But you don't want a career in McDonald's or working at Sainsbury's. So these are the sort of jobs that the, the British public, the British working class don't want to go into or working in a hotel as, you know, basically just changing, being a chambermaid or, you know, changing sheets and just doing that sort of job. People don't want to do those sort of jobs as a career. So those so-called uh, manual jobs, a lot of the British public don't want to fill. So immigrate, immigrant labour fills those positions and that's great for big business because it keeps your labour costs down. And also, they're generally ununionized, which is also great for business because it means you don't challenge them. And typically those staff are not, don't have, don't have mortgages, they're not stakeholders in the society, so they, they're, they're fairly compliant in terms of cert, cert, certain behaviours because, as I said, they're not unionised. So when we look at the Brexit vote now, why did the white working class predominantly vote Brexit and the middle, the so-called educated elite voted against Brexit? They were the leavers, or the, 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 sorry, the, the remainers or the remoners, as some people call them, moaning and groaning all the time because the vote went against them, right? We call them the, they call them the Ramonas. But a lot of the Ramonas were the elite. So all the major institutions in Britain were totally against leaving the European Union, which is interesting. So why were they all against? Because they felt that Europe, that there is some different nationalist views about it. They feel that European integration is a good thing. You know, it's good to be able to go on holiday. It's good to have European integration. They're your brothers and sisters across Europe. So there's that kind of emotional side of it. But the more hardcore political side of it is the argument that it's good for business. Most, it's the biggest trading bloc. It's 500, 510 million people. It's got 30 trillion pounds, sorry, 30 trillion dollars. It's in dollars because most of these things when you do the research is in dollars. 30 trillion dollar economy, the European Union. So it's the biggest economy in the world, the European Union. There's no uh, trading bloc that's bigger. So if you're in big business, you want to get a share of the pie. Now, the problem is the working class don't feel they're getting a share of the pie. So the European Union project hasn't resolved all the problems of the working class. So predominantly the white working class in this country have been the people who have suffered, particularly the white, white male working class, but the white working class has been disintegrated by a lot of things. Let's go through some of those examples. If you look at industrialization, with the collapse of industrialization in Britain, most of the industrialized workers were white working class. Male. That, that, that employment has almost, almost been wiped out in this country. 
So you didn't have to have the highest level of education. You could be going to get an apprenticeship in a construction company, into a factory, into the, uh, a, a, you know, one of the uh, car makers, and you could have a career for life, nice pension, and get a council property and, and life was reasonably decent. Yeah, good life. Today, a young white working class boy with not much education is now struggling to get an apprenticeship that will give him a career. So now they go into, you know, work in a car phone shop, go and work in Sainsbury's, go and work in these places where it doesn't look like there's much of a career. And today, access to a council property is far more terrible than it was 50 years ago. So now the confusion is, what is the problem? The problem is the free market system that says, that's the way it is. It's just the way it is. What did Thatcher say when she was in power? There's no alternative. That's what she said, there's no alternative. This is the way it is. The free market is the way it is. The reason why highest prices is high is because that's what people are willing to pay for them. That's the way it is. But the white working class say, no, that's not the way it is. This is not fair. Unfortunately, through racist politicians and opportunist politicians, they teach the white working class that the reason why you haven't got council flat is not because we don't build them and we sold off two million of them, is because those immigrants have got your flats. Those immigrants are getting your properties. It's those immigrants that are taking your jobs. Not that we don't have enough jobs or we don't have enough well-paying jobs. It's those immigrants that are taking your job. Look, if those immigrants weren't here, you'd all be earning 50,000 a year. You'd all have a lovely council property and everything would be lovely. The reason why the NHS hasn't got enough money is because all these immigrants are using it. This is all nonsense. And there's loads of evidence to prove it if you don't believe me. Look at the evidence. How much do people who are not British citizens use the NHS? When you actually look at the figure, it's, it's peanuts. It's a few million. But the NHS costs 30 billion or whatever it costs. The reason why the NHS is, is, is in its state is because there's not enough money going in it. Uh, think about it, when Thatcher was in power, income tax was 33%. Today, income tax is 20%. And the, and the allowance is at 10 to 12,000 pounds. Think about it. Every one pound you take off income tax, any, every 1% you take off income tax, the government loses between six and seven billion in cash. Think about it. So 13% drop in income tax is worth times six to seven billion. So we're talking 70 to 80 billion pounds a year. If income tax was still at 33%, the government would be getting 80 billion more than it's getting now. That would be enough to build all the houses we need. The NHS would be fully funded with 12 billion a year. Education would be fully funded. The whole country would be fully funded. Public sector would have enough money for jobs. We'd all be, we'd all be comfortable. But we don't. So the government that's in power at the moment, we all know, doesn't care about the average person. They, the, the Conservatives, the history of the Conservatives, look up the history of the Conservative Party. The history of the Conservative Party it was a party of the elite. Always has been, always will be. So it's not interested in working class people, but it pretends it does. Mm -hmm.